is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your host, Ryan Holloway, on the GSMC Podcast Network. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy, happy holiday that you celebrate around this time. If you do not celebrate Christmas, because here at Weird News, we celebrate everything all day, every day. So I got a couple things to talk to you guys about. However, 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 I was speaking with someone prior to recording this episode for you guys. In turn, we had a conversation about chimneys because, you know, Santa comes down the chimney and he drops off these gifts. He eats cookies. He drinks milk and then he leaves. That's what he does. Apparently, apparently he does this um, for, I guess, more than 300 million people. And. Then he goes on his jolly way because there's enough time for all that. But, you know, the Santa Claus estimations are actually kind of high because not even everyone celebrates Christmas. So when you're like, oh, well, how does he get to all these houses? He doesn't have to go to all of them. You know, he, Santa probably uses Amazon. Anyway, after speaking um, with one of my esteemed colleagues about chimneys, we start talking about different types of chimney deaths. I wasn't aware that so many people had died in the chimney. So before I get to the other topics that I was going to cover with you guys, I wanted to go ahead and just review a chimney topic that I had found. I told you guys about one last week about a man who got stuck in a chimney because he was trying to break in to a business. Now, he got stuck and decided to call the police because his phone was with him and he can call someone to say, hey, you know what? I messed up. This is my fault. I'm going to take full responsibility for this. I need someone to come get me, which is fine. That's fine. However, there was a lady that wasn't, um, let's say, so lucky. Maybe she didn't bring her phone with her. Maybe she couldn't reach her phone. Maybe she was stuck in a particular way where she thought everything was going to be okay. A woman in Bakersfield, California, um, died when she tried to sneak down the chimney of her lover's home. Uh, The 49-year-old this body was discovered uh, decomposing inside of the chimney. She was a 49 year old doctor. Yes, she was a doctor. So she went to school for 12 years and learned all about the human body and learned all about things that you shouldn't do to um, jeopardize your health. I'm not going to say that doctors are the healthiest people in the world. I'm just going to say that if you play basketball, there's a possibility that you may know more about basketball than someone that doesn't play basketball. That's just what I'm going to say. That's where we're at with that. Now, she said that, not she said, I'm sorry, um, she's passed. Apparently, the police said that she first tried to force entry into the house using a shovel. Then she climbed a ladder onto the roof. She removed the chimney cap and slid feet first down the chimney. Now, That's interesting because like I was under the impression that when you would go into a chimney that you would go head first, which is stupid on my part. Like, like I'm not a professional chimney slider. I don't know. You know, I'm not Santa, but I would think you'd go like head first for some reason. I don't know why I thought that, but like you just slide in there and then it seemed like you hurt yourself that way. Right. That's why I don't go down chimneys because I don't know. So she went feet first. I guess she assumed that she would land on her feet. Right. I mean, but I feel like when you go down someone's chimney that like you're running the risk of something very bad happening to you because you don't really know like what's on the bottom of the chimney. Like it could be on there could be uh what's the word like there could be that thing there that holds the wood there. You know, there could be that thing there. She slides down the chimney. She gets stuck in the chimney and she's found because the man starts to notice like fluids and things leaking from his chimney. And he calls the authorities and there's a woman in his chimney that's dead. So 
ironically, not ironically, but coincidentally, this not even none of those words work for this. None of those words work for this. This man was aware of this woman's extreme behavior. So it turns out when he did when she did all this, he wasn't even home. Like she was supposed to come back. She was going to come home, come to his house and like flip out. I guess they were going to fight or whatever, something along, along those lines. And he wasn't even there. Uh, he said that he was said that he left the house to avoid the confrontation. Like, hey, I know something, something crazy is going to jump off. I need to go ahead and leave, which is the which is the lesson. This is the lesson to anyone that's involved in any type of I'm going to say dispute, not necessarily domestic violence. but I'm just going to say dispute any dispute that you're involved in. If you're dealing with someone that, you know, that may be a little hmm, not complete in the decisions that they make, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. You need to run away, run away very fast, run away as fast as you can, because if someone's willing to break in your house with a shovel and if they're willing to get a ladder to climb your roof, then they're serious. Here's the thing. My thing is I want to know where you're getting all these tools from. Were these tools that were just outside or did she bring these? Because if she pulls up in a truck with a ladder and a shovel, that means she means business. If the neighbors let her use ladders and shovels like, hey, ma, do you need a shovel? Or excuse me, ma'am, do you need a ladder to go on the roof? Then shame on them. Shame. Because I want to know what kind of neighbors you have if someone has a whole shovel and they're banging on your doorknob. Bang on your doorknob. And then the shovel doesn't work. So they throw the shovel on the ground. They get a ladder and walk it to your home. You, you telling me nobody heard that? Nobody heard someone banging on the doorknob with a shovel. And then no one saw someone. No one saw this lady like wearing her doctor's uniform. I don't know if she's wearing a doctor's uniform, but that makes it more funny. Wearing her doctor's uniform and just climbing up on this roof and getting in the chimney. Nobody saw that. Nobody saw that. Nobody saw nothing like the cops do. Nobody saw anything. You got a whole block of people. Nobody saw anything. So, hey, I'm saying I don't necessarily feel like this was a situation where where this young woman should have not young woman, but where this I mean, nice woman should have, I mean, lost her life. But I'm just saying when you are in a situation where you try to get into somebody's house and they're not home. Right. And then you knock on a the door. They don't answer the door. So you go get a shovel and you try to break into their house. If that fails, then that's the universe telling you that this isn't a good idea. I'm just letting you guys know, like sometimes we all want to make a really bad decision. Then a lot of stuff happens to tell us, hey, this isn't for you. This isn't for you. You know what I mean? Like, say, you know, when you wake up and you want to go somewhere and then things just aren't working out. I don't mean work because we all got bills to pay. We got to be practical, practical. But you know how, like if say you're supposed to meet some friends for something. And it's not, it's probably not the best idea. Maybe you don't really want to go. You're kind of on the fence about it. And you go to get dressed. You can't find anything to wear. Then you can't find your keys. Then you're, I don't know. Then your car won't start. Then you get a phone call from somebody saying, Hey bro, we're probably not going to be there for like another hour or Hey bro, some of us aren't going to go. And you're like, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to listen to the universe and just, I'm not going to do this. And that's what happens. And you just sit down and then sometimes who knows, like on some final destination type of stuff, you may have avoided an accident, but no, this lady wanted to get in this house so bad that she was trying to get in with the shovel. If you didn't, didn't break in with the shovel. So she got a ladder and climbed to the roof and then just jumped in the chimney. Unbelievable. Un, un, unbelievable. You know, that's, I'm a strong believer in listening to the universe. And sometimes when the universe says, Hey, yo, this ain't for you. Then this ain't for you. And getting in that house was not for her. Can you imagine you're sitting at home and the next thing you know, your chimney just starts leaking. Like, say you got a fire going, right? And then it just, psh, 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 and you're like, what, what, what's, what's, what does that smell? Why does it smell like burning velvet and the cheese? And next thing you know, it's a whole body in your chimney, a whole body. And it's not even Christmas. So, I mean, I'm just going to say to you guys, that's a little bit of advice. If the universe says it's not for you, it ain't for you. It's not for you. I'm going to take a quick commercial break. And when I get back, I'm going to tell you guys about how robots are taking over the world. The zombie apocalypse, wait, not the zombie apocalypse. Well, you know what? Hey, the zombie apocalypse and the robot apocalypse, they might just be the same thing. I think for a really long time, you know, I'll be back. I don't want to rant because I'm going to get lost and then we won't be able to pay the bill and the lights get turned off. I'll be right back. Bear with me. 
Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented on the GSMC Podcast Network to fulfill all of your podcasting needs. I have to revisit the story I told you guys earlier because I left out I left something out. So that's to be revisited. It has to be revised. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I apologize. So I forgot something. So let me go ahead and just add this other part in now. Apparently, the lady who went down the chimney, she was a doctor. And according to Mr. Moody, the guy whose uh, chimney she tried to just she tried to run up in, he said that this doctor was known for, you know, treating her patients and giving out medication free of charge, if you will. Now, that to me sounds like the doctor was a drug dealer. Now, if the doctor was a drug dealer, if she was. I kind of understand this more. I get this more. Now, say she say she's been contacting this guy for months, days, who knows? And he owes her bands, racks, thousands of dollars. Now I understand. Now I see. If this all happened because of some money, I guess I kind of get it. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying you should just hop in the chimney and then die. I'm not saying that that's what happened. I'm just saying that if you were trying to get into the house, to talk to somebody and have an argument. If you if you were like, hey, I, we got to talk. I love you so much. We have to talk. Let me in the house. Just let me in the house. And then you do all that and jump in the chimney to die because you want to argue with somebody. I think that's silly. Now, if you've been distributing all these prescription bills under the table and someone owes you thousands of dollars, I guess I have a better understanding of why you made the decisions that you make. You know what I mean? You guys know what I'm talking about? Like you, people make decisions, right? But there's energy behind those decisions. For example, if someone goes outside and they steal my car, right? Say if a a 10 year old steals my car because he wants to go joyride. Um, Okay, that doesn't make any sense. You're 10. You shouldn't even know how to drive anyway. I'm mad. But if somebody that had like an outrageous drug habit stole my car because they had to sell it and find drugs, I'm still not okay with it, but you know what? I understand because you were fueled by something else. So I get it. Some decisions are bad. A lot of decisions are bad, but they're all fueled by different things, which, you know, basically moderates our anger for you ever see somebody just flipping out somewhere. You don't know why they're flipping out. You have no idea. If somebody throws a chair through a window, maybe they got some really bad news or maybe they're just Bobby Knight from Indiana U. Who knows? But there's always reasons behind why people do things. So I'm sorry I left that part out. Maybe the guy owed us some money. I don't. We we we'll still never know. But my advice to you guys is this: If someone's ever banging on your door with a shovel, just know they may come into the chimney. That's it. That's all we have. So, as promised, I told you guys I was going to talk about the zombie apocalypse, but the robot apocalypse because AI, artificial intelligence, is going to take over the world. It got really confusing because every time I watch Terminator, because I watch Terminator a lot, because I think it's I think it's a good movie. I like it. I always wonder how can how can how can robot intelligence get so outstanding that we lose control of it? And I'm going to tell you guys how it gets so outstanding that we lose control of it. First of all, first of all, Amazon is having drones deliver stuff. Now, I don't know where they're having drones deliver stuff, but I know it's like a piloting program. Once they start having drones deliver stuff and we start depending on Amazon more and more, robots are going to control whether or not we could eat. And that's just that, that's it. But here's here's the thing. This is it. Here's the thing. San Francisco has just they they have this robot in its name. It's called K9. The robot like basically goes around the city uh, to places that homeless people are at or places that crimes are happening and it snitches. So it's not it's not a how do I say 
it's not like RoboCop. It doesn't go stop crime and pull out and pull the strap out and just let everybody have it. It actually like just snitches on people. So it's it's like a R two D two. About it's it looks like R two D two, but a little bit taller. Like if R two D two was like taller, basically, and um, it snitches on people. So it goes around and says beep beep beep. You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't have a tent. Hey, why are you sleeping there? There's a tent there, and it's armed with these cameras, so you can't really do anything about it. So basically, they're gonna have more and more of these robots or whatever. And this is just like a pilot program. Apparently, it's working because it goes places. It says where it says where things are happening. It snitches and the police show up or it just makes really loud noise and someone else call the police. Whatever you could do to get the robot to be quiet. Kind of like this. Have you ever lived in a neighborhood where there's been a alar- where there's been an alarm going off on a car and you're like, oh, I wish somebody would stop the alarm. I wish somebody would stop the alarm. Nothing's ever happening. And someone's car gets stolen and then you don't care because um, like their alarm always goes off because it's super sensitive. This won't be like that. When the robot alarm goes off, something is really going on. And this is interesting because this is going to make like a migrational shift for robots to take over the world. This is just one robot in San Francisco. Eventually, they're going to have more robots. And you know what? You know why they have to do this? You know why? Because it costs six thousand dollars to rent in san francisco downtown somewhere it costs six thousand dollars and that's for a shoebox top not for the actual shoebox where you get to like where you lay in the shoebox and you then they put the top on top of you you pay six thousand dollars for the shoebox top so you lay that you you sit on the ground then somebody puts the shoebox top on top of you and that that's where you live that's your home and that costs six thousand dollars to live there so if you charge people that much you 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 really can't just have People just sleeping on the street for free. You really can't. And not even like it's anything against the homeless. It's more or less like an it's more or less like economics, right? San Francisco has no problem with the homeless people. They have a problem with homeless people living for free. Right? So it'd be like if you're in the grocery store and you're buying you're buying like a vodka bottle and then someone else is has a vodka bottle and they're just walking out with theirs for free. And you're like, hey, what's going on with that? Oh, hmm. Maybe we should charge that guy. So that's what they're doing. Like they're like, hey, yo, homeless guy, you can't be here because we're charging the other guys. We're charging these other people six bands to live here. We can't do that for you. We just we can't. So, I mean, I guess I get it, but this is causing effects on other things because what's going to happen is we'll have all these robots just mobbing around to the point where no one's even allowed to be on the street, period. It'd be like demolition, man. But the plot thickens, though, because this is what's happening. In Davis, which is a city that Davis is a city about, um, let's say it's 50 miles outside of San Francisco. It's in the Sacramento area. The mayor of Davis is trying to propose a homeless tax because the homeless population in Davis has increased 3% over the last two years. So this tax is going to be something that homeowners are going to pay. It's going to be apparently an extra $50, $50 per year. Every homeowner is going to pay it. Now, let me get this straight. You're telling me that you're going to charge homeowners more money because you have homeless people? I don't understand. Apparently, this money is supposed to go towards towards like building things for the homeless people and like making things better, making life better. You know, that type of stuff, which is fine, which is fine, which is fine. I just think it's I just think it's ironic. Usually you pay more money on like property tax when like when your city gets something awesome. So if your city gets like, for example, Sacramento got the golden one arena that's where the kings play at they wanted to keep their team they paid a new tax for it yay hooray our team our city has a team you get that you get a water park i don't know maybe you get a new airport whatever but homeless people usually when you get homeless people your the prices in your area don't go up it goes down usually they have the opposite effect on your home value like how do you pay more tax how do i pay more taxes because there's someone sleeping on my lawn. I just want to understand that. But I get it. You want to know why? Because these are, these are like these are Silicon Valley homeless people. These aren't just regular run of the mill, get off a train anywhere from Indiana homeless people. These are homeless people. These are like millennial homeless. These aren't your old school homeless. Mm-mm. These are millenn- These are like twenty something year old homeless people that are just wandering around, wearing skinny jeans, chilling. My people. You know what I mean? So because those people are coming to your area, Davis is like, yo. Our city's basically up and coming. We got San Francisco homeless people migrating out here. Um, so we got to charge you guys more to live here. 
And that's all an effect of the robots taking over the world. So the more and more the robots take over the world, there's going to be a shift of everyone just leaving places that are highly populated and then robots are going to take over. There's more to that. But I'm telling you guys, look it up. K9 San Francisco homeless stopping robot. I'll call him Robo Snitch because he doesn't really stop any crime. He's just he's just running around. Just be just floating around being a robot. And he doesn't really do a lot. But that's the beginning. That's the beginning. That is the beginning. I'm going to pay another bill. I'm going to get back. I'm going to tell you guys about how you can make a billion dollars. Be right back. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast with your favorite host, Ryan Holloway, presented on the GSMC Podcast Network for all of your podcasting needs. Now, as promised, I told you guys I was going to tell you how you can make $1 billion. Are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. Well, here's the thing. Maybe you can't make $1 billion. I'm going to tell you about the opportunity to make $1 billion. As you know, there's a box. Well, you maybe you don't know this. Who knows? So there's a boxer named Floyd Mayweather. He's 50 and 0. Um, maybe the maybe the greatest boxer of all time, arguably debatable, whatever. Um, he fought Conor McGregor, who was an MMA fighter, in August. Mayweather beat him. They both made a bunch of money from it. Blah blah blah. Floyd Mayweather is the type of person that people kind of want to see lose in a fight. So he's been offered, or it's been talked about. That MMA will pay him $1 billion to fight for fights in MMA. So for those of you guys who don't really know how this works, boxing is just with your hands. You stand up, you exchange some blows, some right hooks, uppercuts, southpaws, standards, whatever. I don't really know all the words. I just know that boxing is more or less with your hands. MMA is what it sounds like. It's mixed martial arts. Everything, anything goes, more things go than in boxing right so my thing is um mayweather i think his net worth is like 400 million dollars right and for these fights to go on he's gonna make one billion dollars apparently it's just four fights now i think that i personally feel like the whole mystique of him being undefeated like he can sell more like that but it's a billion dollars so who am i to say whether or not someone should pass on a billion dollars but i'm going to ask you guys like what what would you do because to put this in perspective as far as a billion goes i just want to know if you guys would do it would you get in the ring with, a, with like four mma fights for like four fights for one billion dollars would you do it and but when i'm saying this i don't mean you get to go in there i'm not saying you get to go in there and just and just run around and run, run away from somebody. No, 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 no. I mean, you got to fight. Like, you have to get stomped out. Not, like, stomped out. Like, and you're going to get stomped out. This is going to happen to you. And we're talking about $1 billion. Now, here's the thing. Me personally, like... I don't know if I could do it, but let's let's just put let's just put it in perspective. I'm putting it in perspective a little bit. Okay, he would get one billion for four fights, so that's two hundred mil, two hundred fifty million per butt whooping. So two hundred fifty million per butt whooping. Let me give you some perspective on that. Just recently, uh, Russell Westbrook signed a deal with the Oklahoma City Thunder, two hundred and five million dollars for five years. That's 410 basketball games, not including playoffs. 410 basketball games for four for $205 million, okay? Live Nation just gave Jay-Z $200 million for 10 years, for a 10-year music contract doing tours and so on and so forth, for 10 years. They're offering to pay Floyd Mayweather $1 billion 
for I believe three rounds, three rounds each of three minutes. So that's nine minutes. That's like forty minutes for like one billion dollars. So I'm I, I'm saying I mean me personally like I feel like I'd have to do this. I, I don't I I think I'm gonna have to sign up for four fights for a billion dollars. Like I'm a fight whoever. I'm a fight. My first fight is gonna be against a polar bear. I will fight a polar bear. In the ice caps, I'll fight a garbage truck on the freeway. Look, I square up with the guy from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't really care. I would do it. Me, I don't think Floyd Mayweather should do it because I feel like anybody and everybody is waiting to 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 uh to fight him. I mean, you got McGregor showing up. I probably like probably Mike Tyson to show up. Lonzo Ball to show up. Who knows? Ron, I feel like Ronda Rousey might come on a retirement and be like, "Hey, you know what? I, I'm trying. I'm trying to get some of that too. I'm trying to get it in." So. I want to know. My question is, I mean, and I don't, I don't, I don't really know if he would do it. His hands are all brittle. Somebody replaced the bones in his hands with Doritos, so his hands are all brittle now. So who knows what could happen? But all I'm saying is this: if they offer you guys one billion dollars, I want to know what you would do. I'm gonna ask you again on my Twitter feed if you would do it for one billion dollars. One billion dollars. I mean, I'm gonna go out on the limb. I'm gonna say that's a lot of money. Don't quote me on that. I'm just I'm just saying that it possibly could be. So I'm gonna ask you guys again. I'll ask you on Twitter feed and find out what, and find out what's good with it. Because for one billion, actually, I'm, I want to know what you guys would fight for one billion. You got to fight four things for one billion dollars. Me, I'm gonna fight a garbage truck on the freeway. I fight a polar bear in the ice caps. Um, I'll fight the Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy, and I mean, I fight an elephant. I fight I fight one elephant. You know, I fight an elephant that's taped to a tiger. There. That's what we're going to do. That That's just where we're at with that right now. Yep. Elephant tape to a tiger. This is what I'm going to do for you guys before I wrap this up. I'm going to tell you an interesting fact. Something interesting from history that might just blow your mind a little bit. Just, just a tad. I mean, I don't know if it's going to blow your mind, but I'm going to constantly give you some hot fire that you can tell your friends later on while you're by the water cooler today. Or maybe you listen to this by the water cooler because I am so awesome and you love hearing my voice. And this is the most entertaining thing that you're going to do with your day. And I am so grateful for that. So with that, um, this is this is a fact. This is really this really happened. So Albert Einstein was offered um, the opportunity to be the president of Israel, like the second president. And he declined. He just said, I don't want to deal with that. I'm not in the mood. And I think the irony of that is that we all is that there's like this cliche of we have to get the most brilliant minds for Congress. We got to get the smartest people. We got to get the most awesome minds. When it sounds like if you look over the course of history and like everyone involved in politics, people that are offered political positions are like, um, nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so for Einstein to be offered like a political position of like the highest of like one of the highest ranking and be like, nah, I'm cool. I think that may say something about the intelligence that we have involved in politics. That's not a dig. That's not a dig at all. I'm just saying that when someone's offered it, they don't have to run. They don't have to, they don't have to campaign. They don't have to raise any money. They're just like, Hey, do you want to do this? And you're like, nah, I think that may say something about how the most intelligent people view those particular positions with that i thank you guys for listening and i will be back for the next episode of weird news presented on the gsmc podcast network with your favorite host ryan holloway live long and prosper